Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so, how this will be uh, working? I, I'm not quite sure because yeah, uh, first it was meant like more like a discussion, but still I uh, well, we prepared a couple of slides. So, so uh, uh, first I will sh just uh, well tell you something what what this uh, working group what we actually uh, care about, and then I think there will be a lot of time and uh, space for for further discussion. So, uh, hello, uh, I'm uh, one of the members of working group, uh, which is called Environment and Stacks Working Group. Uh, these are names of the other members, and almost all of them are here. Uh, so, I'm not sure if I should introduce you. Maybe, uh, yes, because uh, there are a couple of new, new faces here. So I am the first one, uh, first collision with whatever it means. Uh, it definitely doesn't mean I'm kind of boss, n nothing like that, maybe more like interface for the group. Uh, Nick is not here. Uh, <coughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Jens, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, there he is here. So then Vasek here, hello. Stuart, uh, yeah, also not here probably because I don't actually know him face to face, so uh, if you are here, just, <laughs> no, uh, he's not here. Slavik, yeah, the old, old new member, re-elected, well, almost re-elected because the elections, uh, maybe just a sh shortcut, uh, like uh, there, there were elections this month, almost, but since we were finding like two, uh, sorry, f four new members and only four nominations uh, were submitted, so the elections actually didn't happen. Uh, then Colin, a new member, hi. Uh, Tomáš, also a new member, and Peter is having a uh, talk uh, below, so he's not here, but also a new member. So welcome on board, guys, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, yeah, move Fedora forward. So what this working group is all about. So. Remember, uh, you, you probably remember Matthew's uh, talk about rings, uh, either from this year or last year or flock or whatever. So the idea about the rings was that there will be some, some core and around some more flexible stacks and environments. So this is what we should care about particularly. Uh, we came up with some vision and this is it. And as uh, Slavik did for developer assistant, I think we also did uh, <laughs> quite a good job creating this sentence, so maybe I should uh, like read it loudly. Uh, that Fedora is the preferred platform for software development and development in any language or application stack. So this is what we are kind of looking forward to see uh, happened in Fedora. Uh, we just uh, also identified a couple of uh, areas of interest. So these are like uh, ideas where we would uh, push the Fedora forward. And there are a couple of slides about particular things. Uh, so first, automation. <coughs> uh, if uh, you are a contributor in Fedora, you probably know that many things, really many things, uh, too, too, mu too many, uh, are manual steps or you need to do it manually, and it should be uh, being done automatically. So since we focus on developers, we also uh, have in mind developers uh, of Fedora itself. So we would like to auto automate more. Uh, this is, uh, uh, there, there is one particular example. Uh, Penguin Stanover uh, working on some automatic review tool. Uh, 
which is uh, connected with the Ferrari review tool, which is a command line that I think, and there also could be some server which would done uh, many more uh, things automatically. <coughs> uh, also connected to automation, the automatic testing, because uh, what we hear quite a lot that uh, difference between Fedora and other distros which are popular between users uh, is that the other distros, or oh, at least I uh, hear, uh, heard uh, it about Ubuntu, that it just works. So maybe this is uh, the way which, uh, this is the thing with which we should focus also, just make Fedora the place which, or the thing which just works and to, uh, uh, <coughs> to get there, we need to have some automation, which uh, automation about testing, because right now, if you want to test something which is not tested, uh, tested during build, like with uh, unit tests, you pr probably need to do it uh, manually. Uh, so, I think uh, in the future, and what the, the uh, yeah. The <laughs> Uh, so this is this is uh, something connected with the Taskotron, which uh, should help us with uh, automatic testing. And yeah, uh, this talk and hacking information is probably not accurate because yeah, it, this is actual presentation from Flock. So yeah, th this one line is probably totally incorrect. <laughs> uh, then the another. Uh, part or part of the ecosystem build systems. Uh, I was talking about flexibility, so this uh, copper idea and copper build system uh, already brought us some level of flexibility. Uh, so this is something we kind of, yeah, we are happy to have in, in federal infrastructure. Um, there are some pieces still missing, uh, like support for other another platforms or Docker, and maybe it's good to mention that these are not things we actually do ourselves or did ourselves. So not just to uh, well, these are just uh, also things that other uh, contributors do, and we, we just keep an eye on it and try to help them if we are able to to do so. Um, so this is just an example how uh, DNF and copper uh, integration may work. Uh, that uh, it should be really easy for users to use it. This is an example how to install a copper using DNF. A similar plugin for DNF, like a plugin for copper, uh, should be also the plugin for playground. And playground idea is also really connected to copper. So um, the problem is that in copper, everybody or almost everybody can uh, build whatever he wants. And we would like to give some advice uh, to users that, okay, this copper seems really good and it, it's safe to use it and uh, uh, it also give uh, maintainers or the packagers to have some uh, apparatus to well, publish his copper and, and promote it. So this is the idea about the additional repo called Playground repo. The copper, uh, sorry, the uh, Playground plugin in DNF should work probably very, uh, in, a, in a very similar way as uh, the copper plugin works. But yeah, uh, you will probably need to wait for the DNF to be default in Fedora to make this happen and also some well, web infrastructure or yeah, the web application that would allow us to uh, promote or uh, yeah, approve uh, the packages that's also probably missing right now. So uh, about continuous integration, this is also connected to like for testing. So there are a couple of projects that uh, were created like Koshe, it's a tool that automatically rebuilds uh, packages and it helps to find problems with uh, packages that are not able to be built because of some dependency changed and now it is uh, 
oh yeah it is not able to build to be built um, <coughs> then uh, yeah Slavex probably uh, still running the Python nightly rebuilds so this is something like uh, it 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 could uh, look in other cases as well uh, documentation well who thinks the documentation is perfect right now so yeah <laughs> uh, so there is problem that nobody wants to write documentation this is not different uh, uh, in our, our uh, yeah we are not different uh, so <laughs> uh, but still yeah this is one of the areas that uh, we like to we would like to move it forward because uh, the documentation is really important for developers. So uh, except the classic wiki, which is kind of messy and you like to polish it a bit, there is a documentation for packaging, which is quite good, but still we need to take care about uh, the current state and if it's up to date. And quite a new idea was to have some site or uh, portal for developers which would be used by, by developers that develop on Fedora, not, not, not for Fedora. So uh, it could be, look like uh, similar to what uh, developers Google.com uh, looks like. So something like that. So if you are a developer in Python and you want to develop your application on, on Fedora, that should be the place where you should uh, find all your or information you seek for. Yeah, and I will probably pass uh, uh, Mike for uh, to to Vashek because he is the Docker 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 guy. Okay, hello. Um, it's awesome to see so many people in the audience. Um, yeah, let me tell you something about Docker Docker Docker. You've heard that from uh, Dan Walsh, but if you have seen Dan's presentation, which was just before this one. I think he announced much more than I can tell you about uh, Docker in Fedora. Basically, I would say that Docker is well supported in Fedora. Uh, guys are rebuilding with latest uh, upstream releases. Uh, we don't carry any patches in Fedora that would like make our life with Docker easier. Uh, we are trying to push that upstream. If uh, some, everything goes well, we will have new features soon uh, in Fedora. If that doesn't, we might carry some patches that would really uh, make our life e life easier because of we can, uh, for example, run systemd in containers quite easily uh, and don't write some custom scripts. Uh, we still have semi-official image in regis registry. Uh, what does it mean? Um, Docker counts uh, official image only if it's built in their infrastructure, uh, but we want to build our images in our infrastructure. So we have to build it in Koji, unpack it, rebuild, par partly rebuild, rebuild uh, add metadata to that image in a Docker build service uh, or in a Docker IO, and then it's semi-official image. It's not official for us, it's basically official for Docker, but I don't know. Uh, so, base image is uh, maintained by base working group at the moment, uh, so that's not something that we are going to do, but we will probably maintain some other images. And we are looking at building layered images. Um, this is something that um, not everybody agrees that distribution should provide, uh, but I think distribution should provide layered images like PHP, HTTPD um, databases on the uh, distribution base image. So we are looking into building a build service next to the Koji, integrated with Koji, using OpenShift and Doc, which is Tomas project, uh, so that we can rebuild um, repeatably, we can have traceability of the content of the images, and a lot of fancy stuff that we need to be able to distribute uh, exactly what, what we and developers want. What else uh, about Docker? Uh, that's, I have a dev assistant here, uh, Slavic might don't like me because of that, um, because it will put the attention to him. But he had a great presentation here uh, about Dev Assistant and uh, how you can use Docker with Dev Assistant and make your, for example, Django development really, really easy. 
uh, or actually to set up the project really, really easy. And instead of half a day, that was somebody from audience saying that it would take me half a day to set up the environment to develop in Django. And Slavik was like, okay, I will do it like this. And it was done. So Dev Assistant will help you. And yeah, we want stacks uh, in Docker, uh, which is basically the layered images work. And we have Fedora Docker files. It's maintained by Scott Collier, who is not here at the moment. And he told me that he is going to review these Docker files again and update them. So we would like to help him with that and review his review so that it uh, makes more sense for users to use those Docker files or the, or, or the images built from them so that they are really useful. And yeah, I have a question here. Uh, if you look at that, what do you want? Um, that's a question that I'm asking on every presentation about Fedora and Docker because we cannot give you something that if, if we don't want that, if you don't know that you want that. So if you want databases, tell us what setup it should have in images. Uh, if you want something else, tell us. Uh, we have a mailing list you can write on Fedora Devel or wherever. We will try to do our best to provide you uh, best experience with Docker that we can. And I will pass, my, I'll pass the word to Slavik. Thanks. Um, I actually get scared when I talk to so few people. Uh, I'm, I like talking to like huge audiences, so I'm pretty scared now. Because like when it's like talking to individual people, I get really scared. Um, can you guys look like a crowd or something? Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> great, great. Uh, really, thanks a lot. That that that, that makes it easier. Um, so, Dev Assistant. Who who doesn't know what Dev Assistant is? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Oh, that's true. Someone on the stream. Thanks. Uh, that's true, but I can't see that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so Dev Assistant, uh, if you haven't seen my presentation, uh, I think there's a problem with the recording. So um, I, I, I think I've been talking to guys here, and they said that there, there's probably a backup somewhere, so they may get it out. So hopefully, if they do get it out, I I'd advise you to watch the whole presentation. Um, so Dev Assistant basically is here for developers. It's supposed to kickstart new environments, uh, work with source code management systems, um, you know, like prepare your environment to work with a certain project, uh, to like lower the bar for new contributors to your upstream project, perhaps. Uh, we have, as it is right now, we have very limited Docker support in Dev Assistant, as it is in Fedora. Uh, the things that I were presenting, uh, that I was presenting here, uh, this was basically about a proof of concept kind of thing that I've been working on, and that's basically having a development environment for like web servers or something using Docker and Vagrant and doing doing it all in like a really production kind of setting so that basically when you push your application somewhere it runs pretty much the same as it did when you were developing it. So no new bugs hopefully. Um, yeah, so uh, we have some limited support in Dev Assistant right now and more and more is being worked on. So. I, I think Vashek kind of said that like we already have that, so I just wanted to set it straight that I'm working on it hard, but it's not there yet, okay? Uh, you have that in your head. Yeah, it's in my head, yeah, it's in my head, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if you people scare me, it will get out of my head and I won't be able to implement it. Um, okay, so more Docker to do. Uh, we would also like to implement a new GUI because uh, the current GUI was created by developers, and you know how it ends up when developers create GUIs. Uh, we understand how to use it, but not necessarily everyone does. So, uh, yeah, so new GUI would be awesome. The command line is, I would say, pretty good right now, so we have no plans of changing that. 
Um, and I guess that's it. Questions? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, so, the the question was, uh, and it was Langdon asking. I have to say for the people on the stream uh, that yes, uh, w if someone wanted to do the new GUI for us, where would he find the sketches or like design basically that was advised to us by a GUI designer? So, where can that be found? Uh, If you contact me, I will dig that up and I will sh send you a link. So feel free to contact me. Okay. Uh, actually, on Mismo's blog, there's like why the current GUI sucks. <laughs> uh, and I think, and she had like some sketches, and then we were talking to her a lot, and then she changed the sketches, and I think. Mismo actually uploaded that to uh, to her Fedora people uh, space, but the precise link I would send to anyone who is interested. I just don't have it right here. So yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, will do. Langdon? Okay, yes, we will publish it everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> yes, yes, of course, there, there will be heated discussions, obviously. Uh, but that's good, right? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, anyway, so. Let's get to another point. Software collections and on that will take place again. Uh, yeah, so uh, software collections in Fedora, like, what a nice topic, right? Uh, so uh, first, uh, I should probably fix what uh, news uh, kind of uh, were said last weekend on FASDEM because uh, like Spotlight mentioned there, Fedora guidelines for software collections are approved. So I really didn't think it was actually true. And so I asked him after that um, uh, using email and he admitted like he was, he was not totally correct. There is a draft. Uh, there are specific topics like small pieces approved, not very much, but still we have like plenty of work uh, before us because um, um, the, the guidelines are actually the first thing we need to do about software collections in Fedora. Uh, it's, it will influence the all other stuff like package DB stuff and this git stuff. So yeah, we are working on it. Oh, not uh, in last uh, month much because um, it took quite a lot of energy for several people who rather started do have a family? Hello, Marcela, <laughs> if you are watching. Uh, no, uh, just kidding. Uh, so we, or at least me, uh, I am speaking about now, at least about uh, from my point of view, I don't give up in Fedora with software collections. I will try to push uh, again, start the discussions again uh, about the guidelines. Uh, so yeah, it will happen once. Uh, Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, uh, maybe uh, Slavic is better better guy to speak about language specific uh, things. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, could you try to look like a crowd again? Uh, thanks. Um, anyway, if Honza manages to push software collections in Fedora, I will buy him like a, I don't know, pack of beers or something because. Uh, yeah, so language specific filtered mirrors, that sounds like a filtered beer. Uh, okay, so uh, anyway, uh, there I'm actually expecting to, uh, that there will be lots of heated discussions on this topic. 
So what are we trying to do? Um, I don't know like what languages you use for development. I mostly use Python and I used to, I used to use a bit of Ruby. Um, and uh, being in the Python community and Ruby community, uh, I recognize that developers don't use RPM, right? I mean, people may disagree with me, people may say that it's wrong, but it's just the way it is and it's not changing. RPM has been around for like, I don't know what. 15 years, thanks. Almost 16. Almost 16, yeah. And uh, I mean, these packaging formats just formats just keep coming for the new languages. We have NPM, uh, also for the old languages like CPAN, right? So, and developers just do use them. So I think that instead of fighting this and trying to push RPM to RPMs to developers, we should recognize this and try to do something something more for developers who want to use like the native upstream, well, it's not native. So just the upstream formats, right? So uh, as part of me, uh, as, as part of being part of NFANS, that just came out wrong. Uh, so uh, like during my uh, work for NFANS Techs, I also want to concentrate on working on a proof of concept, I actually already started working on that, uh, of basically providing a downstream mirror of the Python package index uh, with that would have like several advantages over the upstream one. So uh, the first advantage would be that basically the Fedora mirror would only provide packages that have like same, same licenses and are not malicious. So, so basically developers using this mirror would be pretty sure or almost sure or just sure that they are, uh, that they are using packages that have same licensing according to Fedora's licensing rules and that they're not malicious. Because like uh, PyPI has like pretty good maintainers, the Python package index has pretty good maintainers and they react very quickly if something is wrong there but you know stuff happens so uh, we want to make you know some more promises to users of the downstream mirror and another use case for that is obviously that uh, there are always packages like s python extension packages that have, for example have these c extensions like database connectors for example and uh, if you if developers try to install these they also need like gcc and I don't know, PostgreSQL devil, for example. And like, if we are talking about Python developers, this is not necessarily the case because like, why would the Python developer need GCC on his machine or PostgreSQL devil for that matter? So actually th there is a new Python upstream packaging format that allows packaging these uh, pre-built extensions and we want to use that and we want to provide pre-compiled extension modules for Fedora releases because like, okay, so PostgreSQL devil may change because PostgreSQL is different, has different versions in different Fedora releases. So we will basically have like per Fedora release indexes in our DevPI instance. And basically, so Fedora 20 users will use something like, I don't know, devpi.fedoraproject.org slash 20 or something like that, right? Did I say 20? I did, okay. So just the matching version of their system. So basically we will have like the pre-built ones for all active Fedora releases and the Python developers will just be able to use that index and to get packaging packages with same licenses that are, that are not malicious. If they have C extensions, they are pre-built. So this should basically sum it up, I think. Uh, and we are still working on that. There is some work needed to be done in the DevPI upstream uh, and we're talking to them and we've already started implementing it, but it will take some more time, but we will get there eventually. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, I guess. Are there any questions for this? Yes, please. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so the question is whether how we want to work with versions, whether we just want to provide the versions that are in Fedora or we want to provide any version. Uh, so I would like to start this pilot. It basically, for now, it will be like a pilot, okay? So it will be like testing. I would like to start this as a like sort of permissive policy. So basically, if that package is Fedora, we will we will allow mirroring any of its versions, and we will see where it gets there. That's at least that that's my perception of how we should do that. And I mean, it's a pilot, and it's there to determine if that's right or wrong. But I think it's right to do it this way. Uh, more questions? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Colin Walters. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to be part of this group. And you know, if we accomplish even a small portion of this, it's going to be really great. And you know, we've the, a lot. Some of these are old problems, and some of them are just hard, and they just take a lot of work to just keep chipping away at. And we need people to do that. And so these projects are great. I just wanted to add the reason I joined this group. Um, so I work on Project Atomic, which is a combination of Docker and RPM OS tree, and we're trying to push forward containerizing the operating system. Um, so building Docker layered images is going to be really critical. Um, but the reason I'm here uh, at the high level is I believe in software freedom and I believe in quality and I want free software to be high quality. So something that I asked myself, the re one of the reasons that OS3 was written was to move towards continuous delivery of operating systems. So this ties together a little bit some of the conversations here. So you know we have daily rebuilds of Python, Mercurial, Master. I'm assuming that was what your coper is, right? So the question is, you know, why don't we just ship that in Fedora? You know, why don't why aren't we taking more of the upstreams as they're coming in and just shipping that? And to me, the answer comes down to sort of the technological heart of the distribution. You know, the core of Fedora is the set of packages that are sort of come delivered together, but it has this semantic that it can only increase in version. And there's no way, it's like um, going back to the days of typewriters before you had word processors without undo. It's very, like, we can undo, but it can be very painful. And so OS3, was designed to, because it does not care about version numbers, it supports reverting. And this, I think, is, and Docker has the same semantic in that it's a wrapper for the package format. And on the system, you can undo changes. You can go to an older version more easily. So right now, we kind of have OS tree and Docker sort of plugged in at the end of the system, because changing everything before that is very hard. But a specific example is, you know, why aren't we, again, just pulling in Python, Mercurial Master, whatever, you know, if you look at Fedora, subsets of them care about certain parts more than others. Maybe you care about Python, maybe you are really interested in what the latest version of systemd git master has, um, you know, all, or maybe you care about the latest version of Wayland, you know, why can't I just try Wayland now instead of, you know, uh, in the next Fedora release? And I think at the heart of it, it is because we just do not have this ability to undo. And if we had that, it would unlock you know, building directly from Git master um, and testing things together a little bit more rigorously. So that's something I'd really like to accomplish. Um, in particular, I have a very small goal. If I can have the disk Git cache understand how to pull in upstream Git instead of tarballs. Um, and I have a couple of designs for that, how that would work. Um, because it's 2015, I should not have to manually make a copy of a tarball from a Git repository. So that's something I'd like to accomplish. But it's yeah, my goal. Okay, I'll slightly uh, <coughs> uh, quickly th go through the last uh, slide you have here. It's just the information where you can catch us. Uh, we have a well, wiki page and we have a uh, like mailing place there, and we also have some meetings online or IRC, uh, which used to be on Wednesday, but now they are, uh, since it's, we have uh, new members and we, there, were, there was problem with timing also, <clears throat> so we changed the meeting uh, time and now uh, you, you can catch us uh, on Thursdays and uh, it will be at 1 p.m. and uh, 6 p.m. UTC 
on even and odd weeks. I don't remember which one is which, so just check the wiki and you should uh, find all the information you need. And yeah, now it's time for you, like whatever you want uh, from us or if you have a question about, just shout on us, okay? Okay, so uh, <coughs> as, uh, I'm sorry about my voice, I still am a little bit sick, so uh, as Hansa introduced me, I'm Tomáš Tomeček, I'm working for Red Hat and I was hired to make tools, so I made like a lot of tools in internal infrastructure and right now I would like to get this into Fedora. Uh, lately we've been working with Vashek on the build service, uh, right now it's sort of like a proof of concept and it's it's not that bad, it's pretty much working. So at some point, if it works within Red Hat, we would like to get it to Fedora. So users who are developers and develop on top of Fedora can easily integrate with like everything within Fedora with like Copper or Task or Tron and stuff like that. So that will be my main goal within that Anthem stacks. Maybe I will help uh, Slavek with Dev Assistant because I really like this project and I think it's really great. Okay, so if you have some questions, I can answer. And if not, I'll pass microphone to Jens, I guess, because you haven't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite involved in the uh, Fedora Haskell SIG. Um, we have about 300 packages. Um, so and I, I feel like, <laughs> There's there's a problem that there's probably too many packages in a way, and there's, there's packages that we don't have, and there's packages that we don't need anymore, and um, and so the ring I think ring two now enables a lot of new potential to move faster and get more yeah more stacks in available to Fedora to users, and but just yeah to try and get a little bit away from this uh, like uh, Slavik was saying this problem that developers want to use um, for native packages. Um, um, yeah, but... Uh, what was the question? Ask, ah, maybe. <laughs> There's people who are interested in that, yeah, so I hope. Oh, sorry, the question was if we'll get Haskell support in Dev Assistant. Um, so perhaps we will. I was just saying that we should have uh, Golang support in Dev Assistant. Uh, <laughs> uh, so as, as, as for Haskell, I did it for like half a year while I was at university and I will be glad to accept patches. <laughs> um, sorry, I don't like it, It's but that's just my personal preference. Um, as for Golang, uh, there's actually been someone on our mailing list who told us that he was working on that. Um, and that was like, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I'm not sure what his progress on that was. I just, I, I, w I would like to have Golang support, but I said to myself, okay, if he's working on that, I won't do anything and just wait for him. So I guess I'll get back to him and find out what the progress is. And if he stopped working on it, I will just finish it, I guess. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, more questions? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just uh, uh, fin uh, finish introducing new members because I found the nomination uh, introduction of Peter Hacek so you can read what he is taking care of and yeah. <laughs> you can meet him after this talk probably. Uh, he's getting uh, another role probably, but yeah, this is what he cares about. <laughs> So, any other questions? Oh, ideas? I think we are out of time, right? Ah. Yeah, we have thir 30 seconds, so quick question. Really quick one. 
42. <laughs> uh, what's the meaning of life? Uh, 42. <laughs> Thanks. I think that did it. Thank you, guys.
Is this a live microphone? Ooh, it is. Cool. What? Check, check, check. Yeah. yeah. It's funny when you say that in this country, yes. <laughs> no, I cannot I cannot pronounce any of the letters. I can't read anything. It's terrible. You know the most important word. Pivo. There will not be a puppet interviewing me this time, uh, I, I guess. Unless anybody, do you have a puppet? You could. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, you're you're in this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't. We're out of chairs. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not. Um, I'll stand. Come on. We'll make everybody. We'll 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 switch around when people are talking. Everybody sits down, and then it'll be awesome. <laughs> 